Hi everyone, I'm Archana Kupiswamy, a senior partner solutions architect and SAP specialist with AWS. Today, along with me, I have Frank Powell from Pratera. Frank, could you please introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Frank Powell, Chief Strategy Officer with Proterra. Thank you, Frank. Could you please tell us about Proterra? Certainly. Um, Proterra is a cloud services firm. In addition to that, we also specialize in SAP services, helping customers migrate enterprise workloads to the enterprise cloud. Thank you, Frank. Great. What shall we talk about today? Today, we will be discussing how AWS and Proterra can help SAP customers get ready for the rise with SAP journey and get more value out of the SAP investments. So shall we begin discussing some of the different uh, business drivers and technology drivers that will influence customers as they modernize their SAP workloads? Absolutely, uh, Frank. As we see in here, there are numerous uh, business and technical drivers like compelling events, for example, um, cost objectives, target dates to exit and consolidate data centers, system consolidation from merger and acquisition activities, mm -hmm. end of life dates for uh, say hardware and software. So as we see, there are like numerous drivers like the technical drivers and the business drivers that are important. That's exactly right. In addition, we talk to a lot of customers who are also trying to improve their customer service levels, improve the chi supply chain, or major the manufacturing processes as well. Agree, totally. So modernizing mission critical workloads like SAP in the cloud has been an effective way for many companies to address all of these challenges and make these transformative improvements. Frank, could you please walk us through about what is right price with SAP? Sure. SAP RISE offering is a bundled solution that has the major components that you would need to operate your SAP landscape. It's kind of a transformational uh, software as a service type solution uh, that will help customers effectively manage their SAP landscapes. Thank you, Frank. Maybe on the same line, uh, could you please uh, let us know like what is included in the RISE solution bundle? Certainly. Well, there's three main components. The first is the licensing. So all of your SAP licensing will be included in your RISE contract. Um, while doing so, you actually turn in your old on-premise licensing and they get substituted for the RISE licenses. The second component is the actual cloud hosting of the landscape. So that is not only your core SAP environment, but other products can also be moved into the RISE landscape as well, into the cloud. And then lastly are some support services. So that includes all the support of the cloud infrastructure, in addition to some of the SAP basis administration layer support, things like daily backups, monitoring, and, and things like that. Thank you, Frank. Awesome. Archana, could you highlight some of the key aspects of the AWS cloud that customers should consider as they're moving an enterprise workload there? Sure, Frank, def definitely. It is very important to choose the right cloud service provider such as AWS for both your near-term and long-term success. You need a cloud service provider such as AWS who can maximize performance and protect against business disruptions. With AWS, you can maintain the high perform performance of your SAP systems, improve your security posture for your most sensitive data, and you can increase your system's reliability for your mission-critical SAP-like applications. You need a provider with whom you can innovate faster and transform your business mm -hmm. process. For example, with the 200 plus native AWS services ranging from the latest GNAI, IoT, chatbot, analytics, automation, etc., and also the BTP services running on AWS, customers can transform the businesses, for example, say by extending their uh, SAP systems to the other systems, breaking down the data silos, creating custom applications, and optimizing the core business process, all while keeping the core ERP system clean. And also you need a provider who can help you accelerate your move to cloud ERP, basically helping you realize the value of SAP in the cloud quickly, minimizing the migration time, and often simplifying the path to S4 HANA. All right. Frank, could you please explain some of the most common uh, paths from Proterra for SAP customers on the rise with SAP uh, migrate and modernization uh, plan? Sure, and, and this is the, the most commonly next question that we get from customers, right? Because they want to assess what they have today, but then how do we get there? So these are the three most common. 
And we'll start off for the, the top one here, SAP ECC lift and shift, which merely implies if you're still on ECC, right? Um, just taking what you have and moving it to rise. Um, this is sometimes the most simplistic uh, migration you can make, but you have to realize to do this, typically you do have to be on the HANA database, right? So you have to be running ECC on HANA, which they sometimes call suite on HANA for this to occur. So a lot of times we'll find our, helping our customers taking their ECC environment, whether it be running on SQL Server or Oracle or DB2, and when we migrate to RISE, we're actually converting it to HANA at the same time. So that's a very common one, especially for those customers who are thinking that the upgrade to S4 is a little bit too much business impact for them immediately. So they want to get to RISE first and then think about S4 as kind of a phase two or as a second step. So that's number one. The other two, Brownfield and Bluefield, um, let me describe those because those are generally migrations when you're upgrading to S4, right? So Brownfield is really, think of that as more of an upgrade process where I'm taking my current ECC environment, I'm running through an upgrade utility, and I'm upgrading exactly what I have. And when I get to S4, you know, through my first sandbox migration or upgrade, um, I'm having to do the remedi remediation of how that upgrade impacted all my applications and my data and things like that. Um, that's a very common uh, way that a lot of people uh, do want to actually upgrade S4 and actually get to rise. And Bluefield is similar um, in that you're starting with a clean version of S4 in RISE, and then you're selectively bringing over some of your data, okay? So Bluefield is not technically an upgrade. Think of that as a clean install and then migrating information from your legacy system, okay? Now, there's obviously several pros and cons for each of these uh, types of migrations or upgrades. And we don't have time to go into all of them today, uh, but certainly could provide more detail on that. The one you might see missing here is we're not talking about Greenfield, because Greenfield typically is just starting with a brand new implementation of SAP and starting from ground zero. Traditionally, you don't bring data forward in a Greenfield implementation. So if you're brand new to SAP, Greenfield is what you would do. Um, there have been a few customers that have decided because they've been running SAP so long, their configuration is messy, and they just want to start with a clean slate. Some customers have done Greenfield, although Bluefield really is that solution because you still start with a clean slate, but you get to bring some of your information and some of your data across. So those are the three, if you include Greenfield, maybe four main ways that customers are migrating to Rise today. Awesome. Thank you for explaining this so well. Thank you. I would like to know more about uh, the post-migration support provided by Preteria. Sure. Um, that's another common question that a lot of customers have, regardless if Proterra is supporting them or not, is what does it look like after the migration of RISE is done and what kind of support models are in place and, and what is needed from a customer's on a customer's behalf? So first of all, if you remember back from the very, the very first slides we presented was support is part of the RISE uh, model and the service from, from SAP. Um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is the standard offering has, I guess, a, a subset of services that are included, which are kind of the base services that keep the environment running. They patch the operating system. They patch the OS. You know, they patch the kernel from SAP, and they do backups and things like that. Um, but there's a rather lengthy roles and responsibilities matrix that SAP publishes that you can look at to see what's included in those standard services and what is not. In addition to their standard services, SAP also provides um, offerings that they call CAS, or their cloud application services. And there's a variety of them. I think there might be a dozen or more different services that you can add on to your standard support. Now, those extra services can be provided by either SAP through the CAS program. The customer can perform those services, or you can have a third party like Proterra perform those services. So for a lot of our customers, we find especially those who are customers already, who we've helped them migrate to RISE, they want to retain us to continue to provide um, those type of extra services. Many people think of it as the uh, basis services in the productive client versus client triple zero um, is one way to think about that. Uh, the other thing to understand though is even in that complete roles and responsibilities matrix, and even if you bought all the CAS packages, there are still certain things that are customer facing responsibilities. So it's not a case where if you go to RISE, 100% of all basis support is provided by SAP. Um, most would be, but not all. 
So we find most of our customers looking to us to, uh, to enhance that support that SAP is providing uh, and providing that extra layer of support processes on top of that. The other thing to realize when you go into the, to the RISE model is that now it is ticket-based, right? So you have to enter tickets, monitor tickets, close tickets, and things like that. So a lot of times we find ourselves becoming that liaison to the SAP RISE team for the customer. Um, in addition to that, uh, as part of a migration to RISE, it's very common for customers to include, as part of that migration, um, other systems that are actually moving to the cloud, right? So they won't be part of the RISE environment, but they're also going to the cloud. So a customer, for example, I move SAP to RISE on AWS, but I have 200 other servers that I want to actually also move to AWS. Well, Proterra can help migrate those servers as part of the same migration project, potentially, but then we'll provide the services of those servers, right? Now, in that case, we're providing all the cloud support, provisioning infrastructure, doing the backups, doing disaster recovery. And the nice thing is if, if Proterra is also helping support the RISE environment and these other systems that are natively in the AWS cloud is we provide that continuity of support, right? We understand kind of what's happening on both environments. Um, we can provide a, a single pane of glass from a monitoring standpoint, from a, from a ticketing and just monitoring all the activities that are going on between the two environments so we can bring that continuity again uh, to that landscape. So um, in addition to that, we provide cybersecurity offerings, support of non, you know, non-SAP databases, just support for Oracle or SQL Server and things like that, um, and a variety of other services. Again, trying to help customers, you know, modernize. Uh, we also have a BTP practice. So once you've moved to S4, as I mentioned in this slide or so before, that customers now are implementing BTP services for either old versions of SAP products or deploying new functionality. Proterra can also offer that, that BTP support that's needed on, on a day-to-day -day basis. This is excellent, thank you. Uh, so far, we have been having great discussion on uh, Proterra's uh, path for uh, SAP customers with a rise with SAP journey, and Proterra's uh, post-migration support provided, uh, actually. Uh, Frank, just to make it a little bit easy for the audience, would it be possible for you to summarize uh, the conversation so far we had? Yeah, certainly, and there's a lot of information, and these can be very complex projects, right? And there's a lot to think about as you're uh, thinking about um, migrating to rise. So let's start with the actual migration rise first, right? We talked about some of the business benefit, benefits and technical benefits of going to AWS, right? So the considerations of why and which cloud you want to migrate to. Uh, then the rise migration itself, right? And some of the things you need to consider about the versions of products, what you're going to implement, what migration strategy you're going to deploy to actually migrate to rise. Um, so those are the, that's the core and usually, the, again, the first step uh, of, of migrating your systems to RISE and the things that you want to initially think about. What happens, though, is quickly thereafter, and again, these might be considerations when you talk about the five-year plan, right? You're going to be thinking about BTP because all new developments that SAP is producing are going to be sourced in BTP. So even things like AI, new functionality, we didn't talk about today, but... As a customer, you're going to hear a lot about clean core, right? So they want your core SAP environment to be standard SAP code. They don't want you modifying it. Those modifications will now live in BTP. Also, things like Datasphere and others will also live there. So once you've migrated to RISE, again, maybe part of the same project, maybe not. You're going to start working on your BTP extensions, converting some of that application uh, and data there. And then lastly, once you've got to BTP, almost all of our customers are thinking beyond just SAP. Right? So it's other enterprise applications moving into AWS, taking advantage of other AWS features and functions and, and applications themselves, um, things like big data and other AI initiatives and things like that. But this is kind of the journey we see when you start thinking about even the five-year plan. It's migrate rise, take advantage of the BTP extensions that exist, and then think about other uh, enterprise applications and where they should live long term. Perfect. That's an excellent summary. Thank you. So, Proterra and AWS is better together. Proterra has been a proud AWS uh, premier partner since 2011, uh, having completed one of the very first SAP to AWS migrations. Um, so, uh, Frank, um, we just like to know how uh, customers uh, can reach out to you. Yeah, very simple, actually. A couple different ways. One, you can find information about our migration services and our RISE companion suite at Proterra.com. You can also click on the QR code here on the screen. That will take you to the same pages. 
as well as some of the information will be in the uh, in the notes for the video. Uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to us. We really look forward together uh, supporting uh, the customers' rise with SAP journey on AWS. Thank you. Thank you.